and welcome to week three of our series, I Am Enough. I'm Pastor Kyle, and we are so glad that you're with us through this journey of the seven I Am statements of Jesus Christ in the book of John. This has been such an illuminating experience to see Jesus in such a different way as he literally comes alive to us through the I Am statements. This week, we're going to talk about the fact that Jesus' statement says, I am the light of the world. I remember when my kids were much, much smaller. There were some nights when I would sneak into their room to check on them as they were sleeping or to uh, find something in their room that may have been misplaced or something. And, and I remember at times sneaking in their room when there was no lights and you're trying not to wake them up and you're kind of tiptoeing through the room and suddenly you step on some Legos or you step on a toy that squeaks really loud. And, and I don't know if you've ever stepped on Legos, but it, it's like broken glass. It just hurts so bad. And, and, and you know, you just want to scream out. And, and it just reminds you of the, the danger of walking through life in the darkness, uh, of going someplace where you cannot see the steps in front of you clearly. When I think about the contrast between darkness and light. I, I think about darkness. So often darkness represents uh, difficulty, trials, suffering. In, in a movie or a TV show when some difficult scene is happening to the main characters, the, the mood changes, the, the lighting becomes darker, everything is, is darker and raining outside or something like that because darkness seems to be that, that place where where bad things happen. Darkness seems to be the place where evil dwells. Darkness is, is a, a place that brings a confusion, and, and, and darkness sort of distorts my viewpoint. It, it prevents me from seeing clearly, from seeing reality as it really is. And when I think about light in contrast to that, light illuminates. When, when you walk into a room and you, and you turn on the light, it, it brings life, it brings hope, it, it lifts the, the mood and the spirit, it brings clarity, it, it gives direction and a sense of where you're going, a sense of purpose in, in that. And, and this week, as we talk about Jesus' statement, I am the light of the world, I'm, I'm reminded of the fact that as a pastor, one of the questions that I probably get more than any other question is, Pastor, how can I know the will of God for my life? In other words, I need guidance, I need direction, I need light to see my way forward. I need clarity for my life. I want to know God's direction and plan for my steps. I want to know what God has intended for my life. What about you? Is there an area of your life where you feel confused, frustrated, where maybe you're lacking clarity, you're lacking the wisdom to move forward, you're lacking the, the vision and, and understanding to take the next steps, and, and you're wondering, how can God direct and, and guide my steps through this path? It's amazing because God in his very nature is light. God is a God of clarity. God is a, a God of light. I, I was reflecting even on the very beginning of creation in Genesis chapter 1 when, when God literally spoke light into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God is a God of light, and he brings that clarity. And today I want to look with you at a passage in the Old Testament that, that I think gives us a picture of God as the light of the world. And, and this text is in Exodus chapter 13. Before we jump into it, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory uh, of what's happening in this uh, story. God's people, the Israelites, they've been in captivity for 400 years in Egypt. God raised up Moses to, to deliver them out of captivity. They've been uh, in slavery for so long, they don't even remember what it's like to be free. God brings all of the plagues and, and finally sets his people free, and, and now they're ready to go, and God has promised them that I'm going to take you out of bondage and captivity, and I'm going to bring you into a land flowing with milk and honey, a promised land that's going to be just for you. And, and so God is going to lead his people, and the question is, how is he going to lead them? And, and so in this passage, we see God revealing himself in a way that shows his care for his people, his direction, and his love in their lives. So this is Exodus chapter 13, 
verses 17 through 21. I hope you'll follow along with me in your Bible or with the words that are on the screens. It says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. And listen to this, by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from the people. God faithfully led his people they're coming out of the wilderness. God has revealed himself after 400 years of darkness and silence and slavery. God shows up on the scene and delivers his people miraculously, but he doesn't leave them there to flounder. No, God says, let me lead you. Let me lead you to a place where it's a promised land, where I've got a blessing in store for you. And so God literally descended and led his people by a cloud during the day and by a fire at night so that the people always had direction, always had that sense of purpose, always had the ability to trust in God and see where God was directing them and leading them. God was so faithful to his people to lead them and guide them. In the same way, Jesus promises to be the light of the world. Right now, our world is so much full of darkness. Everywhere you look, there's, there's violence, there's hatred, there's anger, there, there's racial tension, there's, there's political division. Everywhere you look, it, it feels like so much darkness, and at times the, the clouds just seem like they're just gathering, and, and at times it can become so discouraging and so depressing. I don't know about you, but even during COVID and during the times of being alone and, and feeling isolated and away from friends and social interactions, it's been easy to become discouraged. It's been easy to become frustrated. It's, it's been easy to feel like you've lost clarity, like you're alone, like you're not sure of the way forward. And yet Jesus promises to us that he is the light of the world. Jesus gives us hope. Where Jesus is, there, there's that clarity. He brings that illumination. Jesus brings truth. I mean, don't we need truth in a world that's full of darkness and lies? Jesus guides our steps and promises that he's always going to lead us in his path for us. One of the things that I tell people when they ask me, how can I know the will of God for my life, is, is so often there, there's not a black and white statement in scripture of who you should marry or what state you should live in or what job you should take or what major you should have in college. None of those questions are covered in scripture and yet the thing that I always come back to is that when we are seeking God, when Jesus is first in our life, he's the light of the world. If we're following him, if we're seeking him, we're not going to miss his plan for us. He is our guide. He is here in a dark and difficult world to bring guidance, to bring hope. It's not any coincidence that we often use the phrase, the light at the end of the tunnel. When we're thinking about and referring to looking for hope at the end of, of a dark season, and right now, whatever difficult, dark tunnel you might be going through, I want you to know that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how bad this world becomes, we always have hope because our hope is not in the things of this world. It's not in the political systems of this world. It's not in the, the unity of, of racial uh, division that, that we could find in this world. It's, it's not in the, the material possessions or, or wealth gained in this world. Our hope in this world is in the light and life of Jesus. And that's why Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Follow me and you'll never walk in darkness. So I hope and pray this week that it's an encouragement to you to remember and reflect on the fact that Jesus has come to be the light of the world. Let's be a people who keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, not on the darkness and struggles of this life, but fixed on Jesus, 
the light of the world. Thank you again for watching. God bless you, and remember, you are loved.